Slowing down your biological clock, is that a possibility? Well, a new startup wants to make it easier for women to put career first. But the question is, is it safe? And what about the financial cost of it? We're going to have all the details coming up. Hitting pause on the biological clock, delaying motherhood can be a risky proposition. But a new startup wants to make it easier, and it's reaching out to a younger audience who might want to put career first and might not have the money to afford more expensive treatments later in life. It's called Prelude Fertility, and it's featured in the new issues of Forbes Magazine. Magazine. Joining us now live to talk more about it and the possible risks and the possible benefits is Dr. Kate Devine. She is the co-director of research at Shady Grove Fertility. Good morning to you. Good morning. And, and you know, I really think um, it's a little unfair because it's really a misnomer to say we're stopping the biological clock, right? Because we really can't do that. That's absolutely right, Holly. So essentially, of course, aging continues and there's nothing that anyone can do about that. Uh, that said, we definitely do have the ability now with the availability of egg freezing or oocyte vitrification, to put it more mm -hmm. scientifically, um, to preserve a woman's egg quality and to a certain extent egg quantity at the level that they are when they choose to embark upon uh, this therapy. So in the simplest of terms, you know, we always say 40 is the new 20. That is not the case when it comes to your ovaries and your eggs. So a lot of times we see these women having babies later, but the best chance and the healthiest babies come when you are in younger, right? So how does this process exactly work and how do you convince people that they need it? Right, so not everyone does need it, but it, it starts with a consultation with a physician. And for those women who may benefit from this treatment, the way that it works is that they uh, take medications over the course of about two weeks that stimulate their ovaries to produce more eggs than they would in a natural cycle. And what age should you be doing this at? We generally recommend that women who are interested in doing this freeze their eggs in their 30. So somewhere between 30 and kind of, you know, just beyond 35 is sort of the ideal age. Mm -hmm. But many women with good ovarian reserve may benefit from this technology even up to the age of 40 or so. So say you're someone that's getting married later or you're someone that is working on your career and you think you're going to have your kids later. So then you go in for this procedure, you have your eggs frozen, then how does it work later and how do you it, make sure that those eggs are survive the thawing process? <laughs> right, all very good questions. So um, the eggs are vitrified and held in storage and there's really no evidence to suggest that they get any worse over time. And we do encourage women to really consider these eggs to be a backup plan. And but so, when you say they don't get worse over time, I think that's wherein lies this stopping the biological clock, right? Exactly, exactly right. That's where that term comes from and in that way it is quite accurate. Um, and so over, over the time period where a woman is now um, feeling better, hopefully, about her prospects and probability of being able to have a child from her own eggs in the future or multiple children. Mm -hmm. She goes about her life and she feels, hopefully, um, a little bit uh, more at ease about her reproductive potential and her reproductive future. She can pursue her career. She can make good decisions about who is that right person to start her family with uh, if, that's, if that's what's on the agenda for her. And basically then she can have a baby in her 40s with her eggs that were in their 30s. And so hooray, all, all is well. Now, it's not that simple. Uh, it is expensive. Can we talk costs a little bit? Sure. So um, at Shady Grove Fertility, which is where uh, I practice, sure. Um, we have multiple different programs for egg freezing, and I think that's true sort of around the country. The um, startup that you were referring to before has a, a payment plan, um, and I think that's their um, sort of niche is that they allow women to sort of pay month to month. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, available with most fertility practices, so it's not totally different. You just can finance the treatment. Um, but the cost tends to be, um, if you're paying for one egg freezing cycle, it's around $7,000 seven per cycle, mm -hmm. um, plus the cost of medicines, which are separate. Yeah, which are significant as well. And then you have to pay to keep those eggs frozen over time, right? Correct, so it's usually around uh, $500 a year to, to keep them frozen. The first year storage is included in the cost. And then it's also important for people to understand that, like you said, you hope this is a backup plan, but say you finally find yourself in this situation and, and you want to do it. There's no guarantee just because you froze your eggs that those eggs then are going to work. Correct. So there's no guarantee. That said, there is an abundance of really high quality data at this point 
that suggests that these eggs perform very, very well. So you mentioned before surviving thaw, about 10% of eggs won't survive thaw, but of those who do, um, four eggs that were frozen at experienced centers, so that's a big, sure. a big part of it to make sure that you're at the right place, those eggs do perform as well as if they had been used at the time they were originally frozen. So the freezing does not seem to impact, impact greatly with current technology, the reproductive outcomes. Real quickly before we go, because I think this is the most important key about this whole thing, is letting younger people know about the, this option and or the importance of it. Because I have had this conversation, I say I feel like I was like a, the generation that missed it. Mm -hmm. So is it possible to have this conversation come from your OBGYN when you're going yearly younger for you to be like, hey, because I don't think that women who are career oriented or whatever are thinking that they're not going to be able to have their kids later because they're fit or they feel young, you know, they just think it's all going to work out. Exactly. So um, more and more OBGYNs are doing this now, are having these conversations with women, and it is a challenge. So there's such a short period of time that um, physicians, primary care physicians have to see patients, mm -hmm. um, but many, many more are encouraging women at a minimum in their 20s, you know, have your reproductive ovarian, uh, your, your ovarian reserve checked yes, with, with right. blood work and ultrasound. Yeah. And then beyond that, you know, if you're in your 30s and you're, you know you want children and now is not the time, really you should go see a reproductive endocrinologist and you should um, talk to them about whether or not you're a good candidate for this treatment. And OBGYNs are, are getting on board with this yeah. in modern times. Well, clearly the science is there. Dr. Kate Devine, thank you. It's a tough sell, but it's, a, it's an important conversation to have. Back over to you all.